so let's talk about object oriented programming so object oriented programming is a design philosophy and it uses a different set of programming languages than old procedural programming languages like c pascal etc and the primary purpose of object oriented programming is to increase the flexibility and maintainability of programs so somehow using the ops you will learn about how we can increase a program flexibility and maintainability now let's have a look object oriented programming concept so in object oriented programming we have mainly four concept so first one is abstraction second one is encapsulation third one is inheritance and fourth one is polymorphism so let's start with abstraction so abstraction is a mechanism to provide the details about the essential features without describing the background details it means you don't need to tell about all the details what is happening in background you have to just tell about the essential features for example when you log in into a website so you enter your user id and password which is the essential information for login but here you don't know about the background details like what is happening with your user id and password and how it gets verified all is abstracted from you so this is about abstraction the next is encapsulation so encapsulation is a mechanism of binding the object state you can say fields and behavior like methods together into a single unit and encapsulation is mainly achieved by creating classes so with the help of classes we can achieve the encapsulation so a class is a kind of container or capsule which encapsulate a set of fields and methods so when you are creating a class in any language like c sharp java so we are achieving the encapsulation because a class is having the fields and the methods so this is a diagram you can see so when we create a class we create their fields we create their methods so these two things are combining together making a class the next we have inheritance so inheritance is a mechanism of acquiring the features and behavior of a class by another class so the class whose members are inherited is called the base class and the class that inherits those members is called the drive class so let's see another example suppose class b is inheriting the members of class a so in this case class a will called as parent class or you can see the base class and the class b is called as the drive class or you can say the child class next is here polymorphism so polymorphism is the ability of an object to behave in multiple ways so for example we have a smartphone so this is a single object but it can be used for multi purpose like you can use it for making calls listening music sending emails taking pictures so this is the example of the polymorphism and polymorphisms are two types a static polymorphism and the dynamic polymorphism so here the static polymorphism you can achieve using the method overloading and operator overloading and the dynamic polymorphism you can achieve with the help of method overriding so this is about the object oriented programming features you have learned so let's start with class and object so class is a user defined data structure that contains data members like fields properties and member functions like we have methods constructors and destructors and class is a reference type and act as a template for an object now let's discuss about the object as well so object is a representative of the class and it allocates the memory to its class members so what are the 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 fields we have defined in a class so memory allocation here will be done with the help of the object here so even you can think the object as an real world entity having attributes like fields we have within a class and behaviors like methods we have within a class for example we have a student object so a student object can have attributes like name address and contact number and a student can perform the activities like attending classes giving exam etc so for creating the object so we have to create a student class 
with all the attributes like name, address and contact number. And in that class, you have to add the methods like attending class and the given exam. So this is all about the class and the objects. Now here let's try to understand the class and object with the help of an example. So here I have a console application. So my console application name is, you know, class and object. And here we have a program class. So what we can do here, let's add a class as a student. So here I'm adding a, a class, class name. Let's say I'm adding a student. And within the student class, I can add some properties. I can add some fields here. Like I'm adding a property for a student ID. So let's say I'm adding here a student ID. I'm adding here one more property. Let's say student name. I'm adding here one more property. Let's say a student address. So these are the, the fields I have defined within my class. And we can add, define here some methods as well, like behaviors. So as a method, I can add, I can add a method here like show. So here I'm adding a method like public, then method return type is void here. I'm defining the method name here. Let's say show details. In the show details, I will display the student information. So using the console.write line, I can display the student information. So let me add a message here like student information. And here we can show the student ID, name and address. So let me show you the, the student ID, name and address. So just use here console.write line. And here I'm using the student ID. So student ID colon, then show his student ID. So I'm using a zero, then name, then use here one. I'm using here address. So in address, I'm using here two. Then I specify the value for like say student ID, comma name, comma address. So all the information I'm going to display here. And guys here, all the properties, all the fields are here public. So when we'll be create this student class object, we can access all the things using the student class object because access modifier is public. About the access modifier, we will discuss in the next session. So let's create the object of this student class. So I'm going to create the object for this student class. So just use class name and your object name, whatever you want to create. Let's say I'm using here st equal to new student. So here I'm just calling the student class default constructor. But here, if you will see, we don't have any default constructor. So default constructor here provided by the compiler itself on the runtime. So we don't need to create here the default constructor. If you will create by yourself, so it will be used the constructor which you have created. But if you are not creating, so compiler will provide the constructor for our student class. So right now I'm not defining any constructor. So let's access all the public members. So I can access here student ID. I'm defining here one. I'm using here a student name. I'm defining the student name. Let's say Shalendra. I'm defining here a student address. I'm defining the student address. Let's say Noida. So now all the information we can show here with the help of the method show details. So just use ST and then call the method show details. And here to prevent the, the console window, just use a console to read key so that it will not be closed automatically. That's it. So here, we have a student as a class and ST is a object. So this is my object here and this is my class. So this is the class and these are the fields here. And if you're talking about these are the methods we have defined. Now just run the application and see how we are getting the output. So you can see here as a student information, I'm getting the student ID as one name Shalendra and address Noida. So this is the simplex example. This is the simple example of class and object we have created using the C sharp. 